ever. Well, as they say in the classics, now to something completely different. John Harrison is a collector of pop culture. If it was made between the early 50s and the late 70s and it was cool or weird or a bit offbeat, it's bound to be in his collection somewhere. I think pretty much from very early in life I realised that I was dancing to a different tune to a lot of other people. I always had interests in things that a lot of people didn't share or interest in a lot of things that some people thought weren't particularly healthy. My first really big early obsessions were always uh, a lot of television shows from my childhood, things like the Batman TV series, Marvel Comics, um, glam rock. As I got older and was able to stay up a little bit later, I got introduced to Australian television shows like Homicide and Division 4, Matlock Police, etc. They gave me a sense of that forbidden fruit uh, that I felt like I was missing out on. I really got big into horror. I was hooked on monster movies from a very young age, and from there I started collecting other monster-related material like comic books, uh, model kits, uh, statues, posters, etc. So I used to scrape up my pocket money and send away to New York and wait breathlessly for six months or so for them to finally arrive up on my doorstep. I started collecting James Bond memorabilia when I went to see Star Wars and it was sold out, so I went to the film next door, which was The Spy Who Loved Me, my first Bond film, and have been in love with the character ever since. Vintage adult paperbacks hold a big fascination to me, so much so that I've recently completed a book on their history called Hip Pocket Sleeves. The storylines are very entertaining, often very innocent, and the way they use uh, innuendos in order to get racy material past the censors in those days. This is quite an amazing piece of vintage paperback work, a uh, pretty much substandard thriller from 1970, but have a look at that cover art that features a hijacked jet heading towards the World Trade Center in New York. Quite prophetic in retrospect. Some of the highlights of my collection include a selection of Charles Manson and Kennedy assassination memorabilia, which I think highlights my fascination with uh, the darker side of the peace and love culture of the 60s. I like classic board games as well because in a way they bring back that sense of innocence and fun before people sat around playing Nintendo for 12 hours a day. I think the satisfaction one gleans from uh, pop culture and just collectibles in general I guess is it satisfies an inner urge, it gives you a sense of purpose in your life that some people might find missing. <laughs> wow, so many different aspects to that collection. Oh, so that's yeah, nice. out there, isn't it? Yeah. I love oh, that. Yeah, I yeah. think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now it's back to things of a more delicate nature, the fairyland China that the panel bid on at the start of the show. Remember, Adrian bid $500. Nicole was 420 